My name is Kefale, um, and I'll be moderating today's special session. Um, it's called Meet an Expert Session, and the expert I have with me today is Ola Simbos, the country director, um, the Nigerian director at Solar Sister. And, you know, I'll be um, engaging and share with us um, our journey and you know all that she's been up to in, in the industry so that um, the audience we, we can learn um, of our experience and you know we can take that we can invite into our own careers and you know further um, our careers um, you know just dive in I want to encourage us all to make use of um, the chat box um, let's let it all bubble let's let's engage our Yes. Um, tell me where you're, you're, you're listening to. Um, tell me your energy level. Let me know, you know, the speed. And also, do not forget to make your Q&A um, feature to ask your questions. Um, you know, I'll be making this a, a little bit informal, um, um, you know, most, mostly because um, I know um, last in Boston during, you know, I've known her for a while now. So, consider a men a mentee speaking to a mentor and and then you know you can also um with that um notion dive into the and if you ask questions i can feature you on on the question panel where you know she would be able to literally see us um so again um you know i don't need But could you please you know, introduce yourself, yourself and tell us a little bit about your journey? Okay, hi Israel. Do you hear me? Okay, hi, Israel. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you now. All right. So you know. All right, perfect. About perfect. your journey. All right, go on. My journey. Okay. All right. Um, and I'll just do like a brief introduction. So my name is um, Ola Simba Shujiri. I'm country director for Solar Sister Nigeria. And thank you, Israel, for having me. As Israel said, um, I've known Israel a few years now in, with his work in the sector. So it's great to reconnect here on a, on a panel like this. Um, so for me, if I look back at my journey, it actually started in secondary school when I was about like 13, 14. Um, I developed like this strong love for geography and the environment. Um, and in Nigeria, the way I grew up, um, to get into senior secondary school, you just need to take an exam. And based on how you score on that exam, they will choose whether to put you in science class or, um, or arts class. Um, but yeah, my love, I was saying my journey, my name is Ola Simbosho Jerry, I'm country director for Solar Sister Nigeria. And um, I would say my journey in the energy sector started as early as secondary school, between 13 and 14. So like in Nigeria, um, when you do your, finish your junior secondary, you have to write an exam. And um, in my school, depending on how well you did in that exam, they will choose whether you go to science class or arts class. So um, and I was, you know, a bit of, you know, I did well, so I was put in science class. However, um, geography at the time wasn't a science subject, so I wasn't able to do geography. Well, I really, really love geography. So I remember then going to the guidance counselor, like, you know, just really telling the school that I really, really needed to do it. And physics and geography happened at the same time. And physics is a core science subject. Geography then was supposed to be like a, um, an art subject. So I decided to drop physics <laughs> as a science student and take geography. Um, and I really love chemistry as well. So I was doing chemistry and geography. And, you know, I was kind of like a unique student. And I think after me, we actually started having like these blended students who were able to do like different courses. Um, yeah, I grew to be the 
you know, the president of the geography club in school. Um, and yeah, fast forward to university. Of course, I was in environmental sciences. I read urban and regional planning in my first. I myself like, in the love, love, you know, in, in the environment, in climate, in things that, you know, had to do with energy. Um, and yeah, and I think I also have a background in youth activism as well. I did, a, um, I was leading the youth section of um, an NGO, a national NGO, feminist NGO working on women's rights. And so I was coordinating all the youth activities there. We worked a lot on, um, things like the child's rights act um, i was very very involved in that when that started um yeah and you know fast forward to my 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 job at british council where i was a project manager managing schooling projects between nigeria um the uk and other african countries i also managed um a knowledge transfer program between Nigeria and UK universities um, and um, the setting up of green clubs then. Um, so yeah, I think that has all that, you know, has been my background before. Um, okay, right after British Council, I worked with, with the Bank of Industry where I was um, um, managing a project on access to renewable energy. Um, and there I was involved, I was I, um, in charge of capacity development. So looking at how um, access to finance was a challenge and how are we going to get all the major players involved in understanding the sector, understanding what it took to finance a renewable energy project. Yeah, and it was while I was there that the opening for Solar Sister came out. You know, um, three different people sent me the job opening and they're like, they think this is perfect for me. Um, for two reasons. One, because of course it was solar, it was renewable energy. Um, but secondly, or more importantly, because it involved like gender and women's um, women's empowerment. So it felt like that was a really good fit for me based on my background, as well as my current interest. And, and that was it seven years ago. I applied, got the job, and since then I've been growing this network of women entrepreneurs who are distributing clean energy in underserved communities across Nigeria. So that's essentially my journey. What a journey. Um, so, you know, you've been doing a lot of work um, that, that has to do with um, women, um, gender inclusion, especially within the renewable energy space. Um, but the truth is that, you know, there are still a lot of challenges um, when it comes to um, gender inclusion in, in, in the energy um, sector. Um, mm -hmm. By default, people tend to think, you know, it's a main thing, which, you know, it's not really right. At least you have proven them wrong, for instance. So what would you to be, um, you know, the, the biggest challenge to gender inclusion um, in, in energy transition? Um, and what was the way forward? Right. So, right. In terms so of challenges, I'll say one of the big ones is, first of all, there's this narrative out there that, you know, says, you know, that it paints women in a certain way. Um, and this grows from like social norms, um, you know, historically, the woman, the woman's place in the society. Um, or at least the patriarchal society that we belong in. And so you find that, um, you know, a lot of sectors, not just the energy sector, but particularly the energy sector has a very low impute of women. So if you look at the formal sector, um, you know, we have about, um, I think, about 26% or so of women engaged in the energy sector. And if you look at the informal sector, I mean, it increases a little bit to about 30 something percent, but it's still very, very low compared to men. And, um, you know, what we've been trying to do, at least at Solar Sister, is to see how do we kind of um, 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 influence this imbalance or correct this injustice, basically. How do we get women to contribute their own quota into the energy space as well as into every other space? But how do we, you know, it, it doesn't make sense that you have a society where development is dependent on less than half of the population because Nigeria has women a little bit over half of the population. So it doesn't even just make sense that, you know, they're not, we're not tapping our potential. Nigeria is not tapping into the potential that women have. Um, so that aside, but in the gender space, um, particularly, um, the numbers are really low. And so for us, there's that already social um, um, norm and barrier that women face in the household. And then secondly, there's the economic um, barrier. 
So um, I remember very many years ago, we, we did a documentary called Poverty, Thy Name is Woman, and basically showing the face of, the, of poverty as a woman's face. Because if you look at how wealth is distributed as well, again, in the, in, in the society, you find that women have very low on the ladder. So if you look at the poverty line, and if you disaggregate the data of how these people even on what is their gender? You find that a lot of them are women um, and children. And so um, for us, it's about how do we um, turn this narrative around? How do we change this so that it's not just energy poverty or poverty having that woman's face, but energy prosperity having that woman's face. And that's why um, we're involved in the entrepreneurship, the economic opportunity that the en energy space brings and how to ensure that women are part of this journey, women are taking the lead, women are at the forefront of this journey, making money out of this, um, out of the energy space. And I think that that was the concept of, of Solar Sister. Uh, I mean, we're starting from underserved communities, from communities that do not have access um, to the national grid. And we are saying, how do we as women turn the narrative around even at that level and say look energy poverty is not is not just a woman's issue energy prosperity is going to be, become a woman's issue and women are going to make money in this sector um so i feel you know that was kind of the backbone behind the concept or behind the idea of women um, being at the forefront of the energy space especially at the grassroots level um yeah you, you're absolutely right there's a social side to it and you know there's there's the economic um part to it as well and entrepreneurship is, is definitely um a go-to um um solution for for that um you know and your work at, at solar sisters for seven years you said and you know i'm just wondering as a young person um you know who maybe wants to be an entrepreneur in the future um, especially um, in the clean energy. And what, what's your typical um, work day like? Um, you know, what do you do day in, day out? Okay. Um, okay. Um, this one kind of changed post COVID. So, pre COVID, um, I think it was slightly more exciting in the sense that we could do a lot of, or I could do a lot of field visits. So, I manage a team of eight managers and um, about 41 staff in total. Um, and they're spread across 25 states in Nigeria. So, Nigeria has 36 states. So, geographically, it meant me um, supporting my team, um, of course, doing some of the not so glamorous stuff like the finance, um, you know, like uh, just like the day to day building of the office um, but then there was the exciting part of going into the field and supporting my team on the field um, joining women in their meetings because um, solar sister has sisterhood meetings so when a woman becomes an entrepreneur she's part of a sisterhood group um, and then they have all their trainings um, in that in that meeting so part of my work is going there visiting the women hearing their backstories seeing what um, you know seeing the human side of this seeing um, the impact that you know an economic opportunity such as as this um, is bringing to their lives. And I used to find that very exciting until, of course, COVID came and no one was able to travel. And then we had to innovate on how to start leveraging technology um, and you know how to start also changing the narrative that, oh, people in rural areas don't have access to technology. So we had to change our sisterhood meetings to good old conference calls, so phone conference calls. And we're able to actually do that, to connect with each other through the phone. For some people, we're able to leverage um, social media, things like Facebook and WhatsApp. Um, we created like digital materials to really help our entrepreneurs to spread their tentacles. And a lot more people, especially during the lockdown, came online or were able to connect online or, or, or share their, their stories more online. So yeah, so um, more recently, my work is about meeting, Zoom, you know, if you've heard of death by Zoom, I'm like, you know, I'm the, <laughs> you know, that's my picture there, just all day meetings. Um, but yes, um, a lot of the times I'm also advocating for women and gender in the energy space, which I feel like it's a critical thing for me to do, um, to be a voice and to ensure that we're amplifying the voices of rural women um, on international platforms, on national platforms, just to ensure that, you know, we are bringing 
um, more, we're shining the light on this issue because it's really important um, and we really need um, the, you know, the key players to take action, governments to take action, financial institutions to take action, um, yeah, the society to understand the importance of women in this space. So yeah, that's generally how my day is. Yeah. That be stressful. <laughs> Well, um, well, the price you pay for, you know, making people's mm -hmm. lives better, mm -hmm. it's worth it. Um, um, again, you know, I ask you another question or I allow other people to ask questions. I just want to um, tell people who might just be joining us that Ale, I'm moderating the session with um, also Jane, who is an expert um, in um, the space of um, clean energy. Um, um, distributing clean energy products to bottom of the uh, bottom of the pyramid um, consumers um, in Nigeria. Um, she manages 25 states, 25 out of 36 states. Um, you know, and sh she has her tentacles all spread all over um, um, those 25 states. And you know, she at 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 um, Solar Sisters right now, and she's sharing her experience with us. Um, you know, to inspire you who might be thinking of, um, you know, going that route or you who are in that route already and you just need a little bit of inspiration to go even further. And, you know, I just want to encourage us to drop our questions in the Q and A box and then, you know, engage us in the chat box as well. Let's know, um, you know, what you find interesting in our conversation um, and let's know if you have any, any questions. Um, you know, and she, she spoke about a, a day, um, you know, a typical day at work area. Um, you know, one thing I, I pick up from what she said is, um, you know, she's, she has communication. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> she has to do a lot of communication, um, you know, um, even before COVID. And now that it's um, post COVID or, you know, um, she has to even do much more communication than, than before. So, um, and this will lead me. Um, so in in your in your work day in your work life what skills have you found to be the most valuable of course i've, I've highlighted them um, communication or you know you might um have other um skills that you feel that someone who wants to be an entrepreneur should have so um mm -hmm. let me know okay so um so the skills I found useful, I'll say uh, people skills, definitely, um, because um, with communication, um, leading the team, relationship management, things like that, people skills become really, really important um, for me, but also like for successes. So I find that, um, you know, I have to use a lot of my people skills from time to time. Um, and another key one that I found, uh, of course, in those in that people skills is em empathy, of course, in there. So um, I think I've built my empathy, you know, from a really early age. As I said, I grew up in a home. I grew up in a feminist home. Um, I was the youth um, director of a women's NGO, and I used to sit in and listen to a lot of issues, a lot of um, women's issues. So I, I can really connect, and um, I'm grounded in, you know, basically the challenges that women face. And so even in, in translating that to my day-to-day -day life, translating that to how I interact with my staff. Um, as I said, we're 41 of the 41. We have three men. So I'm working with a group of mostly women in terms of my staff strength. Um, and then my entrepreneurs as well, 82% of my entrepreneurs are women and we have over 2000 of them. So, you know, it's really honing those, those skills, um, you know, um, problem solving. So problem solving um, challenges from the ones that are involved, you know, the challenges directly related to the business or the challenges that are related to the woman or to the, you know, to the individual, because you see it's related. All of these businesses are individual businesses. And so, um, you know, a lot of them are um, sole proprietorship. And so, um, it, as you know, with every sole proprietorship, there's a lot of um, influence of the owner because it's just the sole owner. And so the, the, the wellness of that person is very important to the success of the business. And so it's about growing that and ensuring that, you know, the skills that I have, um, I'm able to use to harness the potential um, of everyone. And then, um, yeah, and I think um, lastly, one of the things that, um, or one of the skills that I think that is also 
very important, is great. Um, it's one of our values at Solar Sister. We recognize that the journey is not easy. Um, we don't paint, um, you know, a pretty picture, but we, you know, we have um, grit. We believe that we can continue, you know, you, you, we have the determination to make it. Um, and so we, we tap into that determination and tap into that grit. Um, to grow and lead the successful businesses. So I would say those are kind of the skills that I use or I tap into. Hi. Well, I think, what are you with us? I'm here. All right. Did um, you get that? I think a bit of um, um, technical difficulties. Um, you know, just to bring you up to speed on what we're discussing about. Um, I'm with Ola Simbosu Duren, who is the country director uh, at Nigeria, in Nigeria for Solar Sister. And she's sharing her experience with us. Um, she, she's telling us how she, she got into the clean energy space, um, how she became the country director at, at Solar Sisters in Nigeria. And, you know, she's also um, discussing you know, at the moment, before we lost her, she's talking about the kind of skills that she uh, found to be really useful for her um, in the clean energy space. Uh, so, again, uh, yeah, the chat box, please make use of the chat box. Listen to us from, uh, drop your questions and give yeah. an A spot. Um, I see somebody, um, Ahmed, um, Ahmed has a question. Ahmed, please um, hold on for um, Ola Simbo to join us again. Um, so we can ask, um, you can speak with that. I will bring you up to, I will add you to the part you can directly speak with. Simbo. Um, yeah, I know. I'm Israel, in. do you see me? Do you hear me? Oh, okay. So maybe that, so maybe that was Israel. Okay. Yeah, hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? I hear you, Ahmed. Yes. Hello, can you uh, hear me? Of course. Um, uh, I want to say hi for Israel and uh, I, I this is only symbol. Uh, yes, uh, um, I have a question for uh, Mrs. Olisimbo, uh, in which I salute uh, the spirit of work and participation Ahmed, in the field of energy. Uh, as these matters uh, are not I, important, I can't hear you at the moment. You I, can't I hear can me. Hear I can hear you. I don't know if for last time was here. Can you hear me right now? Are you with us? I can hear Ahmed. I think Israel Israel might be the one with the connection. Uh, I think you, uh, you have a technical me. problem, um, I think. Uh, can you hear me right now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Um, can you hear me? Give me Israel. A can you hear Ola Simbo? If you can hear Ola Simbo, give me a thumbs up. I can hear you both. Can you hear? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, can I ask uh, the question, please? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, of course, um, in in my country, uh, we are seeking to active the women work in the energy firm. Um, so I have a question um, for you. Uh, how do you ever overcome the obstacles and the societal problems? that might have occurred in your during your country and to uh, uh, going to uh, the energy f uh, field. All right, and, thank uh, you. also another question, uh, does uh, the COVID uh, impact the women work in the firm in your country? Uh, another uh, question uh, uh, is, um, uh, does the youth in your country uh, sharing or uh, doing the making decision uh, for the country policies and energy uh, thank you all right thank you ahmed for those three questions um i think the second question was also the same as what um someone asked in the q and a ahmed asked in the q oh yes you ahmed okay perfect all right um so the first one is um 
you know, the obstacles. So how do we face these obstacles? We do it through um, coaching and mentoring. So we are from a society, I'm sure similar to yours, um, where it's a big, it's a patriarchal society, right? The men are in charge of making decisions, um, whether it's economically um, or the decisions that affect the household. Um, and so we have to deal with that in, um, in, in, um, in coaching and mentoring the women entrepreneurs that decide to, um, um, to, to come on board have to do men's engagement so we also need to do sensitization um and, and you know some even some advocacy and um um, an awareness building or creation for the men to understand what it is that we are women, what it is that we are doing, and how women can contribute um, positively to the to the um, to the family income. And once this is, you know, once they're able to understand that, you know, this is not a cult or this is not a means of making the woman um, loose or loud or you know all these other things, all these other fears that we have seen that um, usually um, exist. Um, then the woman is able to thrive in her business. Um, and in the trainings that we've done also, we've um, weaved in things like leadership, uh, you know, because we're dealing with years and years of, um, of an imbalanced society. And so we understand that, you know, we need to build in some of this agency into the women to know that they can do it and they can contribute and they can also um, hold their head high. So I think that's some of how we've dealt with um, with with the barriers um we've had to um, engage sometimes the traditional rulers the opinion leaders to use them as champions and ambassadors for our cause so that people understand that you know when a woman is contributing meaningfully um and especially in the energy sector because we know the relationship between the energy sector and development or business and every other thing so if we're able to um to, to create that link in the minds of the opinion leaders, the traditional leaders, they're able to translate that into their society and help, you know, allow their allow the women work. So do it with just continuous awareness creation, continuous um, advocacy and education, um, you know, to allow them participate. Um, and yes, for COVID, definitely. So um, Nigeria, like many other countries, had the total national lockdowns, and this affected us. It affected our women businesses. A lot of times, um, you know, we have women who are um, teachers small community school all the schools were shut down so they couldn't do like their business in the schools they couldn't move around so it was really 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 a challenge um we also had a challenge with like transportation so you know if there's you, you can't move anywhere and so um you know it, it really affected us part of what we did was um to leverage technology more than ever so we always were using technology since we started but um you know first of all we started with data we were doing surveys finding out what we could do we started developing like digital tools so like um online flyers and teaching on Facebook, teaching people how to get on digital marketplaces um, for the first time ever. So this was happening. We continue doing our trainings via phone because we're like, okay, we won't just sit idle and you know wait it out. So we continue doing um, conference calls. Um, we're having meetings using the you know the the old um, phone conference calls, and that really that really helped us helped our entrepreneurs to keep their spirits alive, um, and to continue their business. And we're also lucky to have a partner um, contribute to a solidarity fund, and that also helped for those entrepreneurs that dug into their capital while the lockdown was on. Um, they helped them kind of kickstart their business and restart their businesses. So um, these are some of the things that we did during COVID. Um, we are now bouncing back. People are now moving around a lot more. They've, they've moved, removed almost all the restrictions now in Nigeria. So things are kind of gradually getting back to where we were pre-COVID. Um, and yeah, for youth, um, sharing and advocacy. I mean, I was telling Israel when I started my story, I started as a youth advocate myself. Um, you know, I was part of, you know, the group that worked on the Child's Rights Act in Nigeria and, you know, pushing policy. And I'll say that I don't think things have vastly changed. I mean, we have people like Israel and other young people who are advocating and, you know, creating awareness and talking to our leaders. 
but just the same, you know, very similar challenges that, you know, women are facing um, is, a, is a similar challenge that youths are facing, you know, to be taken seriously, to, to have their voices amplified. Um, and, and, I, and I think that there's still, there's still more room for improvement there. And young people need to continue to advocate and ensure that their voices are, are heard. If you see like Greta, Greta, Thunberg is like one of the biggest advocates for climate change. So having a voice like that, you know, influence or advocate into um, into, into our policies, I think, will be really taken seriously. So I think like there's room um, room for for um, advocacy in general for youth engagement. I don't think we have maximized it yet, um, but I think that it's something that we should continue to work on. Great, great, great. Again, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties and thank you, Ahmed, for engaging all us in while I was away. Um, now I would um, bring up another person, um, mm -hmm. Davis Sekamwa. Um, thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, bye, thank Ahmed. You. Um, I was trying to bring up Davis just now, but I couldn't see him again. Anyway, um, till I get another person to bring up. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to, you know, take it a little bit down and ask like a, a lighter question, um, which is um, at the end of the day, we are all humans, right? Um, so uh, I just want you to tell us a little bit about what you do outside of work. Oh, okay. Um, yes. um, as in, you know, as you know, most of my most of my time is spent at work. I'm always like mentally thinking and strategizing of things. But when I when I can when I can like relax, um, so weekends and I and I do take my paid time off. I took do take those two things really seriously because I understand that you know for every brain you need to rest it, you need to recharge it. So. Um, for my off days or for days that I am um, just recreation, I think I, I just basically relax. Um, for me, the best form of relaxation is doing nothing. So it's just like, just being like disconnected and just, um, so I have a day where I'm like unplugged, unplugged from, from the world and, you know, I, I do nothing. I stay in bed, I watch movies um, and I just basically relax. Um, um, I, I like to do, I like dance class. I like dancing. So sometimes I go for dance class, um, which, you know, just helps lighten my spirit. Um, yeah. And I'm involved in some other off, off, um, off work. So I'm involved in this, um, 21 charity foundation where we go on long walks. So we do a 21 kilometer walk every year. Um, and in order to, you know, to prepare for that like long walks. Um, so I also do that as well during my off times. Um, yeah, I, I think that's essential. Yeah. My biggest, my biggest professional was climbing on the carpet and getting to the top. I think that's the, 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 my biggest achievement after the year. I don't have a lead. I don't have a lead. I don't have a lead. Wow, you 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 definitely picked a, a bucket list. Um, uh, you know, people, you can be an entrepreneur and you can still be human. Um, at the end of the day, this question is so important. A lot of um um entrepreneurs ex burning themselves out, experiencing depression, um, uh, mental um, you know, health issues and all of that. Cause they are so involved in their work that they neglect the fact that they are humans. Uh. You know, we are almost, I think we are out of time already, but, you know, just to, to round this up, um, um, your final word, you know, in retrospect, um, what would you have done differently um, if you were to be starting your career today um, in the clean energy space? What would you do differently? And what's your advice for other young people? <laughs> I pretty much say I think I think I've I'm blessed. I think I've been blessed. I think um, everything I've done in my in my journey has kind of like prepared me for where I am now. Um, I think when I started my career, I wouldn't have even 
envisage that an organization such as Solar Sister will exist. As an organization, we're 10 years old. So, um, you know, when I was younger, nothing like this existed. Um, so, I, you know, I was, it was outside of my imagination. Um, but I felt like everything, once I saw the opening, it's like every single thing that I've done up until that time just led me to this, you know, to find an opportunity where I can combine my two passions, you know, my passion for gender and my passion for the environment and clean energy, um, I think is just a blessing. Um, and I think it's also paving way for a lot of new things. So sometimes, you know, what you would be might be might have not been created, right? So you don't want to get fixated on I have to be a certain thing, um, but just know that you want to continue to um, grow your person. So I, I was involved in a lot of like leadership training and and trainings that developed me as a person, um, and yeah, and just keep that open mind and just continue taking that step forward better every day. Um, yeah, that would be my advice. Hi, Davis. Uh, hi. Hi, Davis. That would be, might not have been created. It's powerful, it's really powerful. Um, Davis, please. Uh, thank you very much for organizing this dialogue. I just wanted to add something that I think that people out there should also know. When it comes to women inclusion in energy transition, uh, it's important to include them because you know you find these women being the household energy managers, they know what works. And especially these technologies, uh, initiatives come in and they don't involve the women. Most times you'll find that they are not so effective because they are not tailored to meet the women needs. So I think that's why it's very important to include these women in decision making, especially in the traditional energy sectors, because they know what works. They are the ones who interact with these technologies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Davis. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you, Davis. Um, thank you, Ola Simbo, for having this nice conversation with me. I trust that everyone, you know, enjoyed the session as much as I did. And, you know, I look forward to, um, you know, networking better with you outside of the event. Um, sure. Um, sure. All right, guys. Um, um, guys and girls, right? Gender inclusion. Um, thank you for joining us in this um, wonderful session with Ola Simbo so during and um, we'll see you next time. Bye.